out there and start sprinting your ass off and then come back to us and be like, dude, my, my hamstring's pulled. It's like, yeah, dude, you haven't sprinted since you were 15. Me. Like, uh, <laughs> there's a build up, right? There's a build up to everything. And we, we talk about rodeo athletes yes. being on that extreme level on everything. Oh, I heard this. I'm going to go do a thousand of them. Don't do that. Be on the extreme <laughs> level of getting the actual guidance that you need, investing your money properly, your time properly. Get a coach. Dude, I will eat those things till my tongue hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, also, can we point out it's like 8 a.m. and Paul's eating Sour Patch Kids. I love That's it. Good I'm for you. About. They're on my desk. That's what I'm talking about. I got my dad's stash. Good for you. My dad stash. I love it. <laughs> that's, Cannon, that's pretty cool. Cannon eats them all. And so Heather made me my own little dad stash. That's badass. Cannon's not allowed to get his grubby little hands in. <laughs> Don't touch. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You should put like a coat or something on it. Like an actual, like a gun safe. Like, like a lock. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my candy. No. no, that's awesome. We, we bought the the big giant bag from sam's club and so i've got my own my own dad's stash love that love that the uh it's like the trials and tribulations of adulthood make sure you have your own candy stash yeah, yeah. Your yeah little kids will parents. steal it all yes they will Dude, i've just real. given up i just eat whatever is in the house it's like granola bars, more or less. They have like these little chewy granola bars. It's like that and animal crackers. Those are the only two things that we ever really keep in the house or here of late. It like changes. You know, she goes and buys the groceries, which lasts like two weeks. And so for two week periods, it's like these are your options. Not mm -hmm. a whole lot to choose from. Sour Patch Kids definitely aren't on the list. <laughs> That's definitely not, definitely not on the, making the cut. Well, you're yeah. missing out. Yeah, we got four no, kids. I mean, I, mean I figure you're outnumbered, so you're you probably just yeah. yeah. We eat what the kids eat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Heck yeah, still get well, that protein I though. Ate, I would eat hot dogs and marshmallows, and I would be hot dogs. miserable. <laughs> the the kids with the kids eat what we eat. That's, that's kind of yeah, like yeah, that's every once in a while. Now we do have like some we do have some microwavable. Uh, um or like a frozen chicken nuggets that she'll use like if we're getting home late or something like that and we're in a hurry like we totally have things that are you know low quality but for the most part lacy has got dinner in the crock pot whatever it is like you know i mean we did chicken tacos the other night we did whatever but like and i, I know you know we joke but paul's family's the same way like the kids eat mm -hmm. what we eat well i'm not yeah. i'm not not eating i'm not we don't necessarily cater to them they need to learn I, I love the fact that like my kids both of our kids at a young age at four or five or six they're like asking questions we sit down to dinner and they're like hey is this protein mm -hmm. like or is this carbs like what like why like why is carbs important they're like asking those questions and so it's been it's cool to to talk to conley's had an hour and a half gymnastics practice last night and uh and we came home and, and I was like, all right, we need to get you a little post workout snack. They got them in there doing burpees and, and doing some conditioning drills and stuff when they get done. I'm like, all right, we need to get you a little post workout snack. She's like, why do I need a snack? I'm like, well, you just burned a, a bunch of energy there. We want to make sure that we mm -hmm. replenish that. And so anyway, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. It's also like making sure that we um, are able to promote it in a healthy way you know, and not in a way yeah. in which they grow to, uh, have, you know, issues with food because dad was always on me about, I had to eat this or I had to eat that or whatever, you know? So just trying to figure that out. Who knows? We might be screwing my kids up. I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you in 30 years. <laughs> I don't think that's how you're screwing them up. I think you probably are screwing them up. I just don't think that's the exact reason that that's happening. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one, that's the one life skill they're going to come away with. <laughs> that's the one thing I, the one thing I might be doing right. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. But on a real note, like, do you, so uh, you're, are you like picking out a little meal for her or are you like kind of letting her, you like explain what, you know, you need carbs and protein. Are you letting, like, are you giving her choices of those? And she's like, yeah, I like this and that. Or are you like right now just saying like, Hey, this is what I would eat or, and then later you'll, you know what this, I mean? How does that work? 
Well, right now we just like we make a plate, you know, what we're having. It might be like sweet potatoes, uh, shredded chicken um, with some seasoning and stuff. And then there might be like uh, some uh, broccoli done in the air fryer or something like that, you know. And so we'll mm -hmm. like make a plate and and that's kind of what we have. And then we and then we're talking through like, uh, you know, and I don't I don't necessarily sit down and 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 make that this point of like okay now we're gonna pray and then the next thing we have to do is we have to die we mm -hmm. have to dissect the scientific foundations of the meal mm -hmm. we're about to eat but we do like like you know um you know hey i want to be done i'm like well you didn't eat all your protein well what's the protein i'm like well it's the chicken well i mm -hmm. why but i i don't want any i'm like well if you want to get muscles protein is what helps you build muscles so if you want to mm -hmm. grow big and strong and have muscles we need to eat our protein and that's kind of how i address it with the boys that conley at six is getting a little bit more advanced and i'm able to be like hey like we just burned a bunch of energy in practice so right now it's more of an explanation of what's on their plate and then oh, maybe as they get older like hey like uh, what do you want for dinner we need to pick uh we need to pick like you know a vegetable we want to have some sort mm -hmm. of other you know good carb source and then some sort of protein and these are the options mm -hmm. that we have like you put something together and that way they know how to you know by the time they they're going out going out to eat on their own they're driving they're by themselves they know how to build a plate you know they, they yeah. know like no, how to get a badass. relatively whole meal which i think is yeah is pretty yeah it could be useful for sure could be useful there yeah that's like pretty much a, that's millions of adults who cannot do that right now <laughs> so being able to i totally agree for that yeah. is a is a golden golden standard i think that's awesome yeah. no i was gonna say yeah, i think funny, that like that's so cool. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry, I'm cutting you off. No, I was yeah, I was gonna, I would do pretty much the same thing that Logan was talking about, and it's funny. Like we'll be out in public, or you know, at my parents' house or a friend's house or something, and and Cannon will kind of like start to spout off his knowledge about stuff. He's like, oh well, I have to eat my protein first if I'm going to have any type of treat or anything afterwards. So like with uh, our our lunch structure is usually pretty relaxed. Like we we tend to give them foods that they more or less like to pick yeah. sometimes it's a hot dog sometimes it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich um, marshmallows it, it's a little less formal and then they always get some sort of snack like a couple uh or, or like a, a chopped up the the chewy granola bars with the chocolate like they'll get that or maybe three or four sour patch kids or something along those lines and, and they mm. get to eat that in whatever order they want it's just all mm. on their plate or on their little snack tray thing they get to eat it however they want to but then at dinner time if there's ever any option for dessert afterwards which is not very often Meat. like they they understand that they do need to eat their protein before they you know if they don't like the vegetable that's fine if they don't like the carb that we have that's fine but they're they're going to eat the protein if they're going to you know get any sort of dessert option afterwards and they they seem to understand that pretty well which is really really cool no, here's just, something i think is, is really cool really interesting is uh we, we know that protein has great satiation factors so going to make you less hungry as you eat it right we know uh carbs especially processed carbs are going to make you much hungrier much faster after you eat them even while you're eating them mm. so i think even on the kids spectrum they are touchy about eating meat or, you know, not stubborn about it, but they'll eat their rice or their fruit or whatever. Mm. And, uh, essentially that it's just a bunch of carbohydrates, which is not bad. Um, but you got to understand that that's going to mm -hmm. burn quickly, just like it would through you. And they're going to be hungry in 20 minutes. And that's why they're saying I'm hungry again. And, you know, I think getting them to focus on the protein, explaining to them why they, why protein is important in a really simple way, just helps you grow. It's going to help those muscles grow going to help you grow into, yep. you know, a strong person um kids listen to that stuff they're sponges you know they absorb i don't have any but i just mm -hmm. got to witness my soon-to-be niece and nephew hanging out for a week with them and just um you know like their mom talks a lot about sugar and how you know we need to look for added sugar and things like that mm -hmm. so he's always asking about sugar in the meals like is there sugar in this is there sugar in that does he understand it exactly no but he understands the basics of it right and i was just thinking like yep. what if you put that same amount of effort into talking about how important protein was mm. rather than demonizing yep. other things right and i'm not saying that yeah. she's wrong i'm just saying that that was something that came to my mind is that you can switch the script both ways and mm -hmm. and kind of make it exactly how you want when it comes to their understanding of food and um anything like that well you so one of you guys mentioned about oh, i think it was logan talking about like messing up your kids like is she going to get down the road and be like dad made me eat this and that and you know like how much of that is do we get from our parents you know like how many yeah. of us watched our moms 
um, or dads or, or whoever go through, you know, multiple fad diets, multiple, you know, all kinds of things to try and lose weight or get healthier and, you know, struggle with it. And because we see the struggle, we in turn have a, you know, negative feeling towards that or, um, I, and I can't do that mentality. And so mm -hmm. I think that it's just mm -hmm. so important starting off your kids on the, on the right foot and giving them good habits. And I think that you guys are crushing it when it comes to that. So that's, that's really cool. Um, really, really cool. Which I, think I think so too. And like Logan bringing it up like that, it might, you know, affect them negatively. I, I don't think that's the case at all because something that we've started doing recently and, and Heather actually got the idea from Logan's wife, Lacey, uh, was having a, a snack tray mm. available for them to graze on throughout that's the morning. Smart. Like mm. there, there's no, no restrictions. You can come and go as you please. You can take whatever you want. You can leave whatever you want, but like, this is what you're getting don't ask mm. for any other snacks. <laughs> and, yeah. and so what Heather has been doing is like, she'll put um, some cheese blocks, like real cheese, not American cheese or string cheese. Sometimes it's string cheese, but usually it's real cheese. Um, she'll put um, maybe some, some lunch meat or like uh, summer sausage or something on there. She'll put uh, a bunch of different fruits or berries and then she'll do like fun stuff like chocolate animal crackers or marshmallows or something else that's, you know, not quite so sugar dense like candy, mm. but, a, a, you know, a little bit more of the fun stuff. What we've seen, what always ends up getting eaten first is the protein, the cheese mm. and the meat and the fruit. Mm -hmm. And so like on their own, they're making good decisions. Mm. Like we don't have to monitor them all of the time because mm. they're already they already have a solid enough foundation that they're making the good choices first if they get hungry later on they'll come back for the animal crackers but they're going to mm -hmm. eat the real food first which mm -hmm. i like absolutely blew my mind when we like notice that that's what they're doing and i don't know if that's so much like us imparting knowledge on them or them just going for the things that their body's actually craving at the time that's which is it generally real food. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I experienced that. I'm sure everybody experiences that you crave real food. What we run into problems is, is we stuff the junk in, mm. in place of what we're actually craving. Mm. And then we end up craving the junk because now it's familiar and it's hyper palatable and it's super easy to eat and it's usually readily accessible. You can run through the drive through you can go to the gas station, whatever. Um, but like what, what we, the the children these you know unblemished no bad habits kids what the, <laughs> what they're picking is actually real food which mm, i thought yeah. was really really cool that's really cool dude i think that's really awesome to think about they'll when left to their own devices they're gonna do what their body is telling them to do and they're they're just reacting to what the their body's telling them they're not most of the time they're not at that age i mean they're you know charlie's what two three like she's not that old. Two, yeah. Yeah. So she's not consciously saying like, I need protein. She's just like, mm, good. Like, I yeah. like that, <laughs> you know? So I think that's really cool. I also think the junk food side of things, kids, and this is like some random thought I just had right now, but there's like a thrill of asking for it and getting it because sometimes you don't get it. You get mm. told no. Right. So I think that maybe mm, they get exactly. stuck on that. Like, Ooh, like, am I going to get it this time? So I'm just going to, I'm going to ask for it regardless. You know, I'm going to ask for ice cream or candy or whatever. Um, and all they're looking for is a simple yes or no. And you know, mm. when no happens, it, obviously they'll go eat the whatever. But, um, I was just thinking about like the thrill of, you know, is it going to happen or not? Maybe is why kids ask yeah. so much, you know, and they're just like, it's a, not a given. I don't know. Random thought I just yeah, had. No, so it, it, yeah. no, no, I, I think it, you're, I think yeah. you're right on the money there because I just read a post on social media from a, like a child. Um, I don't know. It was like a parenting page. So like they had some child specialist that they were quoting or something and they were talking about screen time doing that exact same thing. Like if you're, if you're giving your kid, you know, an a phone or an iPad or, or letting them watch TV based off like conditions like that, like saying like, Oh, if you're good, you can do this. Then they think it's like some special thing and they have to act a certain way and they're only going to get it, you know, if they're good. And so like when they ask, they, you know, there's like, there's parameters around it. And so it makes it more of a challenge for them to try and get that thing. But if it's more scheduled, like, okay, yeah, like for re uh, example, we, we just bought hooked on phonics, have it on the iPad. Our kids almost never play. on Oh, the for iPad the kids, not you. 
yeah. but mm-hmm. yeah, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I might use it. We'll see. Um, <laughs> if it's effective, if it teaches Canon how to read, then I'm definitely using Got it. Got him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but like so like he, he can do his schoolwork on the ipad but like then there's no like you know that that's what it's for like he's mm-hmm. not like there's no um i guess like there's not a dopamine rush from like mm-hmm. asking like can that's I what i was looking for yes that's what i was it, going it's for. more yeah it's more or less just i'm going i get to do my schoolwork and play these fun games doing on this hooked on phonics thing mm-hmm. on the screen and then after that it's it's over mm-hmm. so like it's a it's a regular thing not a conditional like not if i'm good or you know that type of thing that's cool man i think yeah it goes across the spectrum with pretty much all things when you're raising a kid um you know how you present it to them is gonna be how they react i don't have kids but i'm here for all of your advice if anyone needs me you can shoot me a dm <laughs> <laughs> the number one I got two dogs resource. though it counts all right it counts hey that's how that's how most people sell fitness stuff anyway they have absolutely <laughs> no real world experience they just look shredded and they're like oh yeah pay me hundreds of dollars a month to teach you how to get fit so i think you could totally do it you could make that's where you're missing out you thought champion i am i'm sitting here just you know what reeling in my mind i got champion books I parenting could i could do you Dude, master champion class parenting like a... is is the million dollar deal man like but just if you could do that with champion living i don't want to be out of a job i definitely don't need to be giving anybody parenting advice so i would be out of a job <laughs> if we switched to champion parenting so if we could keep the champion f- fitness too uh that would be great that's not going anywhere i'm uh i'll be <laughs> retracting all these words when i uh have the kids <laughs> by myself i'm yeah. sure so uh, uh can't wait this be... is the, i i i yeah this i don't want to chase the rabbit hole but the podcast will get yeah. a lot longer because doug's gonna be asking a lot of, a lot of oh, questions yeah. a lot longer. <laughs> this is we, we we've had like there's like these phases you know where where we uh you know we've had some kids and like well, Lacey and i bought a house a couple years ago and then and and doug and i have gotten close over the last few years been working together co-workers and friends and like and but he's you know, had an apartment and been able to rent. And, and so like, he's been my mentor for my job and like training and fitness and nutrition for, for years now. But then like, there's so much like life stuff that, that I've had to go through that like, he just hasn't had to go through yet. And so then when he bought a house, I'm like, yes, I was so excited. Cause I'm like, oh dude, just wait. Like things it's, it's fixing to get real now. So n- the next phase is like, okay, he's fixing to get married. Like when the kids come along, I'm like, all right, maybe I can provide some value here. Maybe I can like, I could, uh, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can help. Or if, if he wants screwed up kids like mine, I can definitely help. If he wants, I'll just be uh, like, how did you behave, do this? Probably talk and to Paul. I will do the opposite. <laughs> then do the opposite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's probably a really good, probably a really good strategy. Yeah. That's probably a really good strategy learn from others that don't end up in jail yeah yeah for sure i've done enough learning from my own mistakes (laughs) in my my younger years so i'm i've been caught up on that let's uh (laughs) let's get into today's today's topic which i think is something we've i don't think i know we've talked about this before but rethinking cardio and it Mm. being the best approach to weight loss for rodeo athletes and right now Bottom line, I'm not saying cardio is bad. Okay, just want to get that out there. (laughs) I just had this talk with a client the other day, actually. Uh, It's a new client that just signed up, and I was kind of getting a little bit of background on them about like, okay, you know, you're obviously wanting to do something different. They weren't happy with their performance over the fourth run. And so I was like, okay, cool. You know, they, they're, they're wanting to sign up. Okay. What, well, what have you been doing? And one of the things that they've been doing is, is they've been running a lot lately, um, five, eight miles, three or four times a week. And they felt that, uh, they've been doing that for months and months and months. And they felt that they're, um, Uh, essentially they didn't use this terminology, but essentially their body fat percentage was higher than what they wanted it to be. And they felt like they were packing around some extra weight that they didn't really need. And they didn't understand. They couldn't understand why I'm, I, 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 you know, I, I like, man, I run more and this week Mm -hmm. I'll run more and I, and I keep going, but I'm never really seeming to make progress when I look in the mirror and my performance in the rodeo, I'm tired when I get to the rodeo and I'm never really seeing a whole lot of changes in my physical appearance. And I just don't know why. So I think this is a a great topic for the, for today. 
Absolutely, man. And I think we run into that with athletes all the time, or even people that are not rodeo athletes, just moms, dads, you know, business folks who mm-hmm. have regular lives that want to look good, feel good, be able to do whatever they want in life and are stuck in this freaking cycle of not being able to get the goals they want and doing more and more and more of an activity and still nothing happening. Um, so something we need to address right now is that a lot of people are believe that cardio alone leads to long-term weight loss. And we know that is not necessarily true. Um, what we see here is cardio is, is it tissue promoting or not? Yeah, not, not cardio as an activity not, is yeah, not, not tissue promoting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's if you are doing cardio alone, work. yes, you are burning tissue. So whether and if you are a lean individual already, you're burning muscle. <laughs> so um that's a that's a huge problem that we run into is people think that one, if you do cardio only, you're gonna lose weight and it's gonna continue over a long time. Two my favorite is that people think that cardio makes you look shredded, like muscular, mm. which we know that it is not necessarily true. Um, again, we're not saying cardio is bad. We're going to talk about understanding the limitations of cardio, how we can combine that with strength training, and how that alone can really help your approach. And we'll talk about a little bit of the uh, just the drawbacks of like cardio machines just solely relying on a treadmill or stairmaster to get the the weight loss goals or results that you want. Um, let's talk about limitations of cardio real quick. Uh, Paul, like real simply, yeah. the basic purpose of cardiovascular training and the benefits to your performance, health, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, the benefits to your health is like, uh, it improves uh, cardio, your heart, heart mm-hmm. health. Yes. Um, it improves the health of your heart. So like, Cardio is a good thing. It's a great thing. Like you need a, a healthy heart for longevity, for overall performance, for recovery during your workouts. Like you need that. Um, but cardio alone as a weight loss strategy is uh, overwhelmingly in, ineffective. Um, it, it's what it's going to do is it's going to, I want, okay. So let's talk about the adaptation that, cardio drives so Mm -hmm. if you are doing a lot of cardio and then like in the instance of the client that you have logan they're doing more and they have Mm -hmm. to do more and they have to do more so what's happening there is the the body is paring down tissue both muscle and probably fat as well to make the individual lighter so that Mm -hmm. they're they can move easier for over long distances. So what we were talking about, uh, cardio being catabolic, it's not mushy or it's not tissue promoting because somebody that is really skinny, really lightweight, really, um, like has no muscle mass. They're going to be able to move a lot further easier than somebody that is overly has, has more tissue, I guess would mm-hmm. be just a, a simple way to put it. So the, and and on the on the flip side of that when you're when you're thinking of cardio it's a low intensity over long duration and mm-hmm. that's going to promote type 1 muscle fibers yes. and so that's the it's great for endurance it's absolutely the opposite of what we want to achieve inside the rodeo arena mm-hmm. and so the there's all these different things that we're pushing when we do cardiovascular training that is the exact opposite of what we actually want to achieve. Mm. And so there's on the, on the, the, the final thing to kind of bring up here is like, there's this plateau effect with your calorie burn. You're, you're going to adapt to it very, 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 very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so you'll burn a lot of calories if you've never ran before, or, you know, you know, you don't, you're not used to running long distances. You start running long distances. You're going to burn a ton of calories at first, and then it's going to stop. You're going to get used to that cardiovascular training very, very fast. It's like two to three weeks about is where you start to see those plateaus start to kick in, depending on how often that you're obviously completing that um, exercise. But I think that was when you, the type one muscle fibers is huge because y'all that is a slow twitch, right? That's our, our prime movers. Um, How many times do you hear athletes or future clients, prospective clients say, I need 
more fast twitch stuff. I need, I need to build, you know, I need to be quicker. Running miles is not going to help that y'all. We want mm. to build your type two muscle fibers and we can do that with cardiovascular activity. Uh, it's just not in the cardio or aerobic energy system, right? We want to mm. stick to more of that phosphagen energy system, fast glycolysis, maybe the beginning of it. Cause most of these events are taking about 10 seconds max. Um, so we'll talk about how we can train that and how we can do that. But also that's kind of getting into the sports performance, not necessarily we're just talking about weight loss here for athletes. So, um, I just thought that was really important. And the plateau effect obviously is we see that all the time. And if you're listening now and you've been someone that is, you know, just solely run or, um, biked or whatever for long periods of time, you've probably experienced that yourself. Um, so let's talk about strength training. Logan, why don't you let us know a little bit about why we think that this is the most efficient approach to reducing fat mass and increasing muscle mass. Yeah. So resistance training is definitely going to be more effective over the long term because depending on the variables, as far as your rest and progressive overload, a lot of the principles that we've highlighted even recently on our podcast, you're going to be building lean tissue. You're going to be building muscle and muscle is more expensive calorically. It requires more calories just to function with muscle than fat does. And so mm -hmm. if I was to, if I was to add, say, add 10 pounds of muscle, which is quite a feat, 10 pounds is quite a lot. Number one, it doesn't take up as much space on your frame as 10 pounds of fat. When you look at 10 pounds mm -hmm. of muscle versus 10 pounds of fat. And so somebody might hear 10 pounds of muscle and they're like, Oh, that's huge. Well, if you look at somebody that's gained 10, it's it's not that much but they're going to be burning extra calories at rest because that muscle requires more so we have person a that runs on the treadmill three or four times a week for a few miles to burn three four five hundred calories and then we have person b who resistance trains you know three times a week and they're adding tissue well over a given 10 weeks 12 weeks as they're adding muscle now they're starting to burn more calories at rest. And at some point in time, uh, athlete B that resistance trained is going to burn those 300 extra calories while they sleep or throughout the day mm -hmm. instead of having to go do that. And so that's why the, the main reason why we promote resistance training as the most effective way to get where you want to go. Sure, the scale might not change as rapidly mm -hmm. as it will with cardio, but it's because we're looking at body recomposition we're going to lose body fat we're going to add muscle I, it's every client that has stuck with the process what do they say they say well the scale hasn't changed but i've had to take up my uh, my belt three yeah. notches i've had to go down two pant sizes you know and and they love the way that they they had this number in their head on where they kind of wanted to be weight wise and and we're able to slowly over time as they add muscle mm -hmm. they're like okay forget the scale dude, I look good, you know, mm -hmm. and it's because we're, we're resistance training, uh, and building that lean tissue. Exactly. Resistance training stimulates muscle synthesis, which makes your body composition improve. I've always said number one way to burn body fat is build muscle. You're going to see mm -hmm. that fat start to disappear. The more muscle that you put on, um, we call that basically what, like what Logan was talking about, the scale doesn't change a whole lot, but you see your composition, everything about your um, physical attributes are changing. And that's just a body recomp, right? We're taking where you're at and you're just changing what you have into mm. a different form. And it's crazy how different they look, same exact weights or even heavier than what they were yeah. prior, yeah. <laughs> but way more muscle mass, way less fat, and they look way leaner. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. really important. And, and we're not talking about bulky. You know, we're not talking no. about being bulky and we get this a lot with female clients and that when I start talking about resistance training, they're like, oh, well, I don't want to get huge. And, you know, it's like um, I, I saw this analogy this morning, actually, while we we're waiting on the podcast. So those, oh, this is perfect timing. But he said he said looking at, you know, lifting weights and thinking that you're going to get bulky is like me looking at my minivan and thinking that I'm, I can't get in that because I'm going to become a NASCAR driver. You know, like mm -hmm. it takes a lot. It takes a lot of intentional effort, eating, nutrition, sleep mm -hmm. to get bulky. It, it's not a thing. And what oh, a lot of times what women are referring to is that they, you know, they want to be toned, but not bulky. Well, toned really isn't a thing. What that means is that they want to add muscle mass and they want to lose body fat. Mm -hmm. That's how we get that lean 
that that leaner look, that quote unquote toned look, and that comes from progressive overload resistance training. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've been lifting for 15 years and I'm still not bulky. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Dude, I've been trying to so get happen. bulky. I've been trying to I've been trying to get bulky for four years and I'm still yeah. not there. So yeah. I wanna no. I wanna share a client success story real quick. Uh Logan kinda gave us the uh the, the woe story at the beginning and I was gonna save my success story for the end, but I think this is a good time to insert it here. I have a client who's been working with me for it's been over two years now. It's been a, it's been a while. Um he's been really consistent with his training. But he was one of those guys that always wanted to run. Before we started working together, he was running five kilometers, eight kilometers, because he's from New Zealand. I don't know what that converts to, but that's what he would tell me he was running. A hundred miles. Um, and then he would, uh, it's like 10 he miles. would add those in, in addition to our workouts as well. And he's doing it like, <laughs> you know, several times a week, sometimes every day. And over the last, he, we've talked on the phone the other day and over the last six months or so, he's like, yeah, man, I, I, I quit doing those runs. And, uh, I had some guys telling me like, man, you're looking, looking Jack, dude, you're looking strong. And he's like, I'm at the lowest body weight I've ever been since we started working together <laughs> and I feel better. And I was like, "Ta da!" Yeah. you finally listen and look what mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. the, it's you crazy, get the man. result you want. Mm -hmm. It is. If you just, just overdoing it on the cardio. Yeah. Don't overdo the cardio. And if you have a coach for fuck's sake trust them you are paying them to do that like golly uh, nothing chaps me worse than like uh, someone paying me to coach them and then telling me what they need i'm like dude all right you can go somewhere else <laughs> this is not gonna work uh, this is not sorry. worth rant not over worth the headache for sure no yeah, well it's no, just like i completely why, I, I just I, don't understand yeah don't understand yeah. but i'll uh, take my real car quick. to the mechanic and then tell them and tell them how to fix it <laughs> hey i think you, you know what i'm saying like that's why i yeah, use a mechanic that one yeah yeah exactly yeah. yeah here's my shit fix it thank you that's what i'm paying you for <laughs> yeah, yeah i will exactly. listen to what you tell me because i don't know anything about this exactly Exactly. <laughs> but on a real note on the car i really would have to take it to a mechanic because i'm absolutely worthless when it comes to that kind <laughs> yeah, of thing. you and me both brother <laughs> you and me both <laughs> It's like it's the interior rotor carburetor. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's your blinker fluid, bro. Yeah, Fix your blinker dude, fluid. Duh. I'm I'm out, I'm underneath the I'm hood out. for two hours. I can't Looking find the blinker fluid Where's reservoir. The storage tank for this shit? <laughs> Where's the storage tank for this? Oh my goodness! I'm the last right. person that needs to own an RV, and here I am sitting in one. That I love it. That I think I it's hilarious. In a year because I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, don't. well, it's okay, fixed now, so get answer. after it. Yeah, yeah. For get sure. after it. <laughs> uh, real quick, let's talk about cardio machines. We see, man, we see guys, girls on the. When I go to the gym, I've seen guys and girls on cardio machines solely for their entire session, and. A lot of time, that's like close to an hour. Um, you Dude, know, yeah, just, a lot of gyms will put they'll put uh, like time printouts on, on the cardio machines that says, "Yeah, thirty minute time limit," and then mm -hmm. get off because <laughs> people will just camp out on those bad boys. Man, I just that just seems so damn boring to me. First of all, like that does not mm -hmm. seem fun in the least bit. But relying on cardio machines, treadmill, stairmaster, and granted, they're not bad. But if you're solely relying on those two lose weight we're missing the boat uh we just talked about how the body adapts to repetitive cardio movements leading to mm. decreased calorie burn over time paul just talked about that so the more and more we're on the cardio machines the more and more we adapt the less and less we burn you just keep digging the hole and going nowhere um something i think can be a huge benefit is cross training incorporating different cardio methods to engage different muscle groups and energy systems with your resistance training at the same time. Um, mm. So actually that'd be like a combination training, but you could also do my favorite is the rower. Like if you're going to do a cardio machine or the assault bike, rower, assault bike, mm -hmm. full body exercises, full body movements, dude, they, especially when we are wanting to train the correct energy system. So if you're a rodeo athlete and you want to get better at your sport, and also lose weight, a great way to do this would be training your phosphagen and fast glycolysis, ugh, glycolysis energy systems on the rower or the bike. And it's very, very simple. It's six to 10 seconds of all out effort as hard as you can fucking go. And then you rest for, it's like 10 to 12 ratio. 
So 10 seconds, you're resting for two minutes and then you're going to do that again. And you know, you could set that up on a, I don't know, start with three, three sets and build Mm. up to 10 sets over Mm. what's that eight weeks of building. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see huge changes in your performance in the arena and also on the scale as well. When you combine those with your resistance training. So if your number one goal is to, what do you guys think? Would you put that in the beginning or the end? Those kind of intervals of a session. So if the goal is, if their goal is to lose weight, gain muscle to say they are they're they want to lose 20 pounds Mm -hmm. and they're more of the cardio effect, I would say maybe at the beginning, but for mm -hmm. like, Almost everybody, I'd probably put it at the end. I, the, I would love if if our schedule allowed, I would make it a com, it's like a separate, a separate session. session. Yeah, so a, a separate session. If our schedule allowed, now there's a lot of people that you know it just doesn't work that way. But mm-hmm. most times, I think that we would get better results in the long term, and it would be more uh, they'd be able to be compliant more if we had a resistance training program to even two days a week and one day a week. We're going to work on some conditioning of some kind. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only three days a week. Then we're we're able. To to still see adaptations i mean ideally it would be a separate session but uh i'm with paul i would probably typically speaking have it at the uh have it at the end of our training so we can focus the uh, majority of our uh of our attention central nervous system all that kind of stuff when we get in the gym we can focus that on resistance training progressive Mm -hmm. overloading controlling the movements i don't want you wiped out before we start Mm -hmm. doing a bench press or a back squat or i don't want you like i want to focus on those things first and then with whatever's left over we can work on some conditioning if we need to Mm -hmm. but separate day would be ideal i love that no i was just just trying to see what so you guys had to say on that we all agree on that for sure um when i was in my really competitive crossfit training stuff we had separate sessions for everything so we had an aerobic mm-hmm. session in the morning an olympic session in the afternoon mm-hmm. and in the evening we had our metabolic training some kind of amrap uh, to, it, it was a lot but i loved that part because you got to focus solely on what you're doing in each mm-hmm. session right so like i'm on the bike or the rower or running or whatever i'm solely dedicated to that you know as in my lifting session same thing i'm really focused on that so in my eyes as a professional athlete guys that are at the elite level and aren't doing like running a ranch or a farm on the side they really could do that they could break this up into sessions no mm-hmm. problem and an average person mm-hmm. could do that too talking about these sessions taken if you break them up they're like 20 minutes 30 minutes tops yeah, a piece so it might actually work better for for people than trying to cram it all into mm-hmm. one because not only yeah. are you just wasted after an hour of, of crushing it in the gym but i think you you know work out eat go throughout your day eat a little bit go work out again done you know yep. Um, yep. could be a really good option Absolutely. but when you're yeah. when you're selecting cardio machines, just really quickly, I um I I see this mistake a lot with new clients. Is so if if your gym maybe doesn't have rowers, but they have bikes, typically most gyms, Planet Fitnesses and others, are going to have multiple types of bikes. And I always recommend um that we get on the like the 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 upright bike bike. you know like we're we're not like lounging uh you know just chilling watching netflix Mm -hmm. while we're pedaling get on an upright bike an air bike is ideal something like the assault bike or something an air bike is ideal um not a ton of gyms unless you go to a really cool gym uh not a ton of gyms are going to have an air bike which is fine but the the up the upright bike is the one that you want to be on if you're Mm -hmm. if you're going you're going to work a little bit harder you can turn up the intensity you can freaking do some sprints that way it's a little hard to do sprints when you're uh laid back like you're lounging so, yeah. on the on the yeah. yeah on the layback bike i don't know what the layback bike was even invented for but Old i would people. have to imagine it's probably for like geriatric rehab mm-hmm. stuff yeah yeah and yeah. so Older like people. it being in a commercial gym and you seeing a 20 year old jump on it is like it's get off there like you don't. yeah know. That's well i think kind of handicap spot that's it's like parking in for. a handicap spot it it is it for real is it yeah, takes out sure. just yeah, alone sitting down. I'm relaxing my back. You take out so much engagement yeah. from uh, your yeah. hips, your waist up. I mean, your yeah. your full, your core is not working. You're you're not doing shit. And that goes for leg presses, leg curl machines, anything with a back to it. Sit up off the mm-hmm. back, squeeze your core, mm-hmm. squeeze your shoulder back. Good posture, and it it's crazy how much like more difficult those machines get when you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, you make you just move so much better, right? Um, but just to wrap this all up as you could tell, we just went through like 
about 80 different ways that we could approach cardio, the ways not to do it. We do not want to be running miles. We want to be adapting this more to our energy system training for our sport. I think that just highlights really the emphasis of if you don't know what you're doing, guys, find, find an expert, find a coach, get someone that can find out what your goals are, evaluate you and set you up on a plan that is going to get you on the path to success. You can keep trying to listen to us and then do this all on your own. And that's great. If you can do that on your own, hell yes. Keep using the things that we just said and take them and get on with it. But if that's not you quit spinning your tires and, and get someone that is able to help you. And even if it's not us, there's tons of coaches out there um, that can help you out and get you on the path to success. But as you can kind of tell here, there's a lot going on and there's a lots of things that play into all these, uh, the whole equation to get success for, for weight loss, muscle gain, whatever your goal is. Um, just make sure that you are getting the most out of every step that you're taking, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, yeah, do you have anything else to wrap this up? Ben, I just, the only thing that I wanted to say is that, you know, I, I, every time I post about how running isn't optimal for rodeo athletes, I seem to get a lot of kickback from people that love running. If you love running, absolutely go for it. Like mm -hmm. I, I've said this before on the podcast, we are not telling you that running is bad for you. We're not telling you that running, all we're saying is that running is definitely not the most optimal way to prepare for the rodeo arena. There are much better ways to do that. It's also not the most optimal way to lose fat. If you want to lose fat, definitely not the most optimal way. If you enjoy running and it's something that you can be consistent with, I having it with a, uh, with a resistance training program, I think is absolutely fantastic. And I, you know, applaud you for doing something Agreed. and for not just sitting on the couch. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. No need to run miles. Y'all we're not in a foot race with these animals in rodeo. So, uh, you know, until that happens, we don't need to be running. Kenny miles. Hayworth has to... been one time. I saw a bucking horse chase him down. <laughs> one time. I mean, it was still, it was still more like, still it was still more a like sprint. a sprint. He did, it yeah, was still he a sprint. Yeah, it wasn't really it was a sprint. It was, yeah, absolutely. For sure. For no, sure. It was a sprint y'all. Uh, yeah. If you don't, if you haven't gotten this, that from this episode, sprinting would be much more ideal than running miles, but mm. also sprinting requires skill. Like you need a coach mm. to set you up for sprints, to get you prepared ankles, knees, hamstrings, all of those things. You don't just go out there and start sprinting your ass off and then come back to us and be like, dude, my, my hamstrings pulled. It's like, yeah, dude, you haven't sprinted yeah, since you were 15. Me. Like, uh, <laughs> there's a build up, right? There's a build up to everything. And we, we talk about rodeo athletes yes. being on that extreme level on everything. Oh, I heard this. I'm going to go do a thousand of them. Don't do that. <laughs> be on the extreme level of getting the actual guidance that you need, investing your money properly, your time properly get a coach y'all thank you so much for listening we could not do this without you please we'd love to hear feedback questions suggestions about future podcast episodes shoot us a dm um you can i think at the bottom of this episode on spotify at least there's all kinds of things you can plug in you can type in the things that you liked about the episode things you'd like to see um and lastly we've got to thank our sponsors beastmaster pro rodeo been with us since day one um without a doubt the best rodeo gear in the industry whether you're the elite of elites or just getting started they have something for you and something that will be extremely beneficial to your rodeo career you can use our discount code champion living it's all one word uppercase going to save you 10 percent off of your order and that's going to be at beastmasterrodeo.com guys until next time we'll catch you later